Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, I want to review a brand new product from H&H. &H. This is their TAC Gauze. This is compressed gauze, but it has a few new features that I think you're going to want to take a look at. So a couple of things I think you guys will be excited about is this compressed gauze is made in the USA and it doesn't have an expiration date. I'm super excited because this is made in South Carolina, my home state. So before we open up the TAC gauze here, I'll kind of give you overall size of the packaging here. If you've got it completely laid open, it's about 8 inches in length and about a half an inch thick. But if I were going to store this in my trauma kit, I would fold it to here. So you're looking at about 6 inches by half inch and it weighs 2 ounces. To show you a little bit of comparison here, this is the NAR compressed gauze here. You're getting 4.1 yards, which is right at 12 feet, I mean ish. And then you've got 120 inches, 10 feet here. So do get a little bit of difference in the size comparison here. If you're running the new combat gauze, you could fold it up and you can kind of see comparison here. So you can see here the gauze has a manufacturer date and an inspection date. This gauze does not expire, you just have a recommended date that you can inspect it to make sure that it's still vacuum sealed and it still looks intact. You have four corners here that you can use to tear open the packaging. So we'll go ahead and tear it open and take a look at it. You can buy the tack galls folded two ways, just round folded like this or a Z fold. We just went and purchased it rolled up like this. That way you can unroll your dominant hand and wound pack with your other hand. All right, so we're going to use the Focus Research Group Wound Cube as our demonstration model here. We've got a gunshot wound here. You've got your gauze here. So this is going to be in a junctional area that we cannot get a tourniquet to. So we could use some gauze to pack here. Take a a bit and just start running it down in there and get it far down to the source as possible. And we've got as much packed into the wound cube as possible. If you can see it packed down in there. Take the rest of it and we can tear it. Look how easy it tears. Let's go back and take another look at that. You can't typically just tear galls with your bare hands like that. You can't. So that makes it super easy. So when you're wound packing, you can unroll it just like I showed previously. You could also get super fancy and pull it from the center and wound pack like this. So now you have a lot bigger bulk to go down into the wound with. So after you've held pressure for about 5 to 10 minutes here, you don't have any more blood coming around the hole, so you know you've got bleeding controlled here, you could use an h, &H compression bandage with the flat fold or the standard fold here to wrap around the gauze, around the limb, and to hold pressure for you. So another advantage of using this hat gauze over, say, a roll of cling here, which you could use a roll of cling to wound pack with, but the trauma surgeons don't really like this because this type of gauze tends to leave these little small fibers inside the wound here. So they have to go back and get those out and it's a pain to clean the wound out after you've gotten the, the bleeding control. Tack gauze by h, h doesn't leave those little fibers. So tack gauze is a non-hemostatic agent gauze. So it's a blend of different cotton gauzes and h, h says that it has better absorption, a better ability to control bleeding than regular compressed gauze. Now another option to use this gauze for is to say you have a large laceration on someone's leg or shoulder or something like that. You could use combat gauze or sealock, something like that. Go in to the source of the bleeding, pack here first. And if you needed some backfill to kind of finish filling up the wound, you could use this gauze for that as well. So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training.